um, let's switch that on and um, let's welcome everybody to it. Thank you for you coming along lively, much appreciated, and to everybody else who's who's watching this on the recording. So this is the second LinkedIn session. Uh, so what I want to do is um, a quick recap of the most important bits from the other day. Can you see the slide there, Lee? Yeah, I can. Yeah, all good. All good. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's just uh, make that a bit bigger. Uh, and we're fine. Excellent. Okay, so we'll do a quick recap on uh, some of the most important bits uh, in this. Um, and then what we're going to do after that is we're going to go live onto my profile on LinkedIn, and we're just going to go through it so we can apply what we're looking at on the slides um, in the real world, as it were. Uh, right, so let's move forward. So let's quickly go back to uh, lead generation and how um, it typically used to happen uh, with financial advisors still does to some extent but it really is changing so somebody needs a financial advisor somebody makes a recommendation in the old days we used to just take that recommendation the referral was all we ever needed and we just phoned up the financial advisor not quite the same these days uh, when somebody um not quite the same these days when somebody is given a recommendation um, it's not in itself necessarily enough for us just to phone them up straight away we typically go online we will check them out uh, on google we'll check them out maybe on facebook uh, and linkedin and a variety of other different places and it may well be that while we're searching for them on google or linkedin we will spot other financial advisors um, and we may well get distracted. So the financial advisor that we're actually recommended to may not be the one that we actually end up looking at in the long run. And of course, with more and more people doing blogs, there's more and more personal finance out there on the internet. It's entirely possible that even though we were looking for some help with our pensions, our retirement planning, our investments, whatever it is, it may well be that we'll find an article or we'll find a blog or a YouTube channel um, and we may have a stab at doing it ourselves. Um, that's just the way it is these days. Um, so more and more financial advisors are starting to try and find ways to be more visible in these places where consumers are finding personal finance information. So when people are on LinkedIn, it all starts with you. You create your profile, you optimize your profile with keywords, you do some stuff on LinkedIn, and that could be commenting on other people's posts. It could be putting your own posts. It could be company updates. It could be a variety of different things. And um, in an ideal world, you will be using hashtags in amongst your content. No more than three. Sometimes you see people putting like 10, 12, 15 or more hashtags in a post, um, and that really doesn't help you at all in the LinkedIn algorithm. So just stick to about three. Uh, so somebody's doing a search. Maybe they're looking for a retirement planning expert. Maybe they're looking for a pension planning expert, uh, something like that. Uh, and they are doing that on LinkedIn right now. LinkedIn, the hub of LinkedIn is, is the search engine tool. And, and let's say for sake of argument that you have come up high in the search results, or at the very least, you've come out on the first page of results. Um, and somebody decides to have a look with you. Uh, they will look at your profile. They may send you a connection request. Uh, but one way or another, you have the opportunity to notice that they have looked at you and therefore start a conversation. And it may well be that, that conversation will lead somewhere else uh, to a coffee shop, to a Zoom call, Skype, whatever it will be. And if everything goes to plan, they end up as a client, maybe just maybe we end up celebrating at somewhere down the line. So what I've been talking about is this bit, making sure that you come up visible in the search results. And we'll just quickly recap how we do that and also the, the messaging process that, that leads people to. It's almost the, the messaging process is the big missing bit from most financial advisors when they're on LinkedIn. Uh, any financial advisor can come up high in the search results if you keyword optimize your profile. But most financial advisors are missing this bit, the opportunity to have conversations with people. And we all know this, whatever source your leads come from, whether maybe they are a referral, maybe it's something from unbiased or vouched for or uh, an introducer. At some point, you've got to have a conversation with people. Wherever that conversation takes place, it has to happen somewhere. And this is what we're trying to do, get people to our value ladder. Remember, we talked about this concept where we... Um, help people to build trust in us. 
uh, perhaps we're offering some downloads, some lead magnets, just something that brings people into our world. And what I've been advocating is that those conversations that you have with people on LinkedIn, and indeed your LinkedIn profile itself, uh, is arguably an early step on your value ladder. And this means that in many ways, your LinkedIn profile is not just a marketing tool, not just another social networking platform. It actually becomes an asset of your business. And the more we look at our LinkedIn profile as assets of our business, rather than just marketing tools, the more effective and the more useful it becomes. Um, we've got to have a plan. And hopefully you made a, a start on putting your LinkedIn plan together. And this is my plan. Um, and as I pointed out the other day, your plan doesn't need to be five pages long. It can be back of an envelope job as long as you do something that gives you the opportunity to identify who you are trying to attract um, to your business, what sort of clients, what sort of work, what, what is it that you want from being on LinkedIn. And here's my plan uh, to attract speaking, training, consultancy business. To do that, I've got to be visible where my client and prospects are. To do that, I'm going to create conversations on LinkedIn. I'm going to look for any opportunity I can to start a conversation with people with the intention of then taking them off LinkedIn to that coffee shop, to that Skype call, wherever it happens to be. And these are the people that, that I target on LinkedIn, conference organizers, people who book trainers and speakers, uh, financial advisors and uh, providers, sales and marketing uh, leads as well, and um, school careers leads as well. So that's my plan. And hopefully you'll have starting to think about um, putting your own plan together as well. Remember what was the biggest single biggest mistake that people make on LinkedIn? Not fully completing their profile with the emphasis on fully completing their profile. The algorithm wants to, when people are searching for experts on LinkedIn, LinkedIn only really wants to put in the search results people who've worked on their profile so that when people look at your profile, they can actually get some value from it. So LinkedIn is not interested in putting people in the search results who have really got a, a half complete profile. You may appear in the search results, but more than likely you won't appear very high up. So fully complete your profile and keyword optimize it. Remember we talked about coming up with a list of keywords that um, these would be the sort of words or even a really short phrase that someone might type into the search box. Uh, remember, I used the example of um, uh, financial planner for heart surgeons, something like that. That is one keyword. This is a really, really important exercise to do. It needn't take you very long. You can probably do it quite quickly, but come up with um, between six and 12 keywords that hopefully would lead to you appearing in the search results. You then need to number those keywords in order of importance. So number one is the single most important keyword. And then take the top five keywords and try and get them into as many sections of your LinkedIn profile as you possibly can. And then use the remaining keywords from time to time uh, in your profile, in comments on other people's posts, in your own posts, in your company page, and so on and so forth. So that is really important. Don't forget also... You might want to come up some keywords that relate to the services that you offer, particular skills that, that you've got, maybe cash flow modeling, something like that. Be careful about cash flow modeling. Um, I'm starting to see financial advisors using that, but I don't think there are too many people typing cash flow modeling uh, into the search box in, um, in LinkedIn. So just kind of be conscious of, of the, the jargon that, that we use. It's okay to have a little bit of jargon, but just, just think in the real world, is someone like to be typing cash flow modeling expert on LinkedIn? I'm not so sure they are, but cash flow is a relevant word that they might be using. Technical skills, target markets, industries that, that you really want to focus on as well, um, and maybe some other business skills that, that you've got that, that may be relevant on your LinkedIn profile. Remember, your profile is not your CV. Even if you're looking for a job, it shouldn't really be positioned as a CV. It should be positioned as you, your expertise. And think of it in these, these terms, in the absence of you meeting you in the real world, what else can you offer people? Well, you can offer people your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and so you can see, you know, if you've got some video of you on your LinkedIn profile, you can see how valuable that will be to people. 
um, to get it on there. And again, don't forget, you might want to include some keywords related to your target um, locations as well. So if you are looking for heart surgeons in uh, Gloucestershire, then heart surgeons Gloucestershire will be a keyword for you to be considering. Don't forget to come up with three or four hashtags as well that you might want to use uh, on a regular basis when you're commenting or when you're posting. Um, relevant hashtags, nothing too complicated. Um, maybe, you know, financial planner reading. Um, that that is a that's a good hashtag to to be using and use it regularly get associated with with that particular hashtag all our activity on linkedin for the most part for, for most financial advisors will be about once we've got our profile set up will be about driving people to our profile that's going to be more important than anything else remember this challenge is about doubling or even more than that significantly increasing the number of profile views that you get as a financial advisor and what we want is profile views from our dream clients we don't want profile views from recruiters i see financial advisors talking about that time and time again if you are being approached by recruiters on linkedin it's your fault okay it's not their fault it means you've positioned your profile in such a way to look like a generic financial advisor well, what we really should be doing is positioning our profile so that you appear to be the financial advisor for heart surgeons or the financial planner for your particular target market. So try and get it as focused as you possibly can. And when you start doing that, you will find that more of the right people start to visit your profile. And remember uh, what I was saying the other day, no one visits your profile by accident. They always do it on purpose. And any of these things here could result in someone looking at your profile. So, you, you know, you might want to uh, print this one off, type it out, take a screenshot, whatever it is you want to do, so that you are just always conscious of what sort of things do I need to be doing on LinkedIn that will get people's attention. Uh, and number one on the top of the list has got to be search result positioning. Putting content on there, that can result uh, in people seeing, your, your, seeing you, uh, maybe writing an article, a profile update, any of these things here, I'm not going to go through them all. Remember, I talked about uh, the importance of putting your birthday on there, job anniversaries as well. Anything like these get people's attention. The LinkedIn algorithm does a lot of your marketing work for you, okay? But um, it won't do as much work for you if your profile is not fully completed. Okay, remember I asked again, would you like to know the names and contact details of everyone who visits your website? can't really give you that, but LinkedIn gives you the next best thing. They give you a lot of data, the most important of which is who looked at your profile. Um, and here's just a screenshot. We're going to look at my profile in just a, just a minute or two. And what you can and should do is on a regular basis is go through the list of people who've looked at your profile um, and decide whether or not you want to follow them up for whatever particular reason they are. Okay. And remember, say thank you to them. Someone looked at your profile, just write them a quick note back. Remember, there's scripts in the in the ebook, which hopefully you've downloaded by now. Just say thanks for looking at my profile, John. I uh, hope you found something of interest. Let me know if I can connect you to anyone in my network. Can I ask what prompted you to look at my profile today? Okay, uh, that kind of message, it works for me every single time. And that's why... I go always say that that feature, the ability to better see who has looked at your profile, is the single most valuable feature on the LinkedIn platform. Status updates, things that work, story-based content, short observations, okay? Try to avoid putting images unless you've uploaded through the mobile device. Try to avoid putting links um, in your posts as well. So. Um, I think I've got the example in just a second. Check out our latest blog, click, click here. Don't do that, okay? Um, the LinkedIn algorithm will penalize your post for doing that. Really good thing to do, comment on other people's posts. And to me, that's one of the, the really cool things about this. I get it that with the best will in the world, it's all very easy for me to say, you should be using LinkedIn and do this, do that, do the other. But I get it. You've got a, a business to run in the meantime. You've got a job to do. So a real easy shortcut that works is just simply comment on other people's stuff. Um, you know, if you've got the time to create your own content, story-based stuff, as I was talking about, then, then 
that's fantastic. That's icing on the cake. But a really easy thing to do is just network with other people. Great post, Mike. Hadn't thought of that. Thanks for the heads up. Add a couple of hashtags, financial planner, Reading, whatever. And also video is really powerful as well. Remember, I showed you this one last time. This is a financial advisor, um, a, a post, and it's a typical post um, that I see financial advisors do. Just don't do this sort of stuff, okay? This is advertising, and LinkedIn wants you to pay for advertising. And if I click the See More button, there'll be a link in there as well. So just don't do that. That's the worst sort of post that, that you can do. It adds no value to the community, so LinkedIn will penalize it. Don't do that cute stuff check out our latest blog click here even if it's got a cute puppy next to it don't do it doesn't work um, but this is the one that i did um that, that really go went to show me just how powerful story-based status updates are and this is literally word for word something i posted on linkedin about when i was um, I'd had a busy week. I was due to go and speak to, in Bulgaria. I hadn't booked my parking at Heathrow Airport, checked out the price, and I thought, right, before I book it, I've just got to pop down the town, which I did, came back, redid the quote, the price had gone up. Okay, that's a story-based status update, and it just works. There's no need for a picture. There's no need for a link. Um, but look at that, 1,200 likes, 200 comments, and all of the comments said the same thing. Uh, multiple profile visits, 21 conversations, and some of those led in to, led to some work being done as well. So that's how you do it. This one, again, uh, just as a quick reminder, John Young, the BBC journalist, came off one of his shifts. Someone had nicked his bike. He did a quick um, selfie video, um, and it did really, really well. Lots of comments, but it ticked a lot of boxes along the way. Um, so that's that's the sort of stuff that we should be looking for. Okay, this one again um, from Emily stopped in Leeds, had a chat with this gentleman here. I'll lay any money that Emily um, was offered um, some jobs in uh, some of her direct messages there as well. And this is a quite recent one as well. So keep it keep it up to date. This lady um, who, who did a post on LinkedIn, she said, the picture on the left is the photo I used to use on LinkedIn before COVID. Uh, this is the photo that I use now on LinkedIn because it's much more representative of how I actually look today. And uh, again, look at that. Um, over half a million <laughs> engagements, 19,000 comments. That's how you use LinkedIn. Keep it human, keep it personal, keep it story-based as well. And just to kind of wrap that up, um, that section there, what I'm talking about is treat LinkedIn as an asset of your business. So hopefully you've been able to have a go at your um, homework, make a note of the numbers on your dashboard, on your LinkedIn profile. Hopefully you've got those written down because if you follow this stuff and you do um, what I'm suggesting you do, you will see those numbers going up. And if you keep doing it, those numbers will, should easily double within three weeks, something, something like that, yeah? Write your plan. Um, don't put your plan in your head, write it down, okay? Literally write it down, type it out, just physically go through the process of writing it down, and that will give you so much more clarity about how you are using LinkedIn. If you haven't already done it, get your personal LinkedIn health check score at linkedinforadvisors.scoreapp.com um, and um, get your score, get your personalized report, uh, download your free copy of the book as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over onto LinkedIn and we're going to have a look at my profile. Just bear with me while I move a few things around. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's move that over here and let's refind you. Where have you gone? Okay, so I'm now going to share my screen. And hopefully you can see my LinkedIn profile. So what I can do is I'm going to work down. And the purpose of this bit is to kind of build on what we've just been talking about, to show you this stuff um, in action, um, and so that you can model this approach um, for your own LinkedIn profile. And uh, I strongly recommend that you do that. Really, really. Uh, important stuff. Now, first thing I want to do is start right at the top in the browser. 
And you remember I talked about this in the first session. Um, you can see here, this is my LinkedIn URL, linkedin.com slash in slash sales keynote speaker. So I have personalized my own URL. Um, and the purpose of doing that is so that I can get some keywords in there. Now I've gone the whole hog and taken my name out. You don't have to do that. Uh, you don't even need to put some keywords in there. It's entirely up to you. But what I'd strongly recommend you do is that if your URL has still got a bunch of random letters and numbers in there that you edit those out and you do that here where it says on the right, edit public profile and URL. Okay. Um, and briefly, as I mentioned the other day, if you've got target markets, that speak another language, you can add a profile in another language here. Okay, so let's start at the top and work down. Most important thing, well, it's not the most important thing, but it but it really helps, is use this piece of space at the top here, yeah? Um, anybody, whether they're on free LinkedIn or premium LinkedIn, uh, everybody gets this piece of space here. If I profess to be a speaker and trainer, then I've got a picture of me speaking and this is actually to a financial planning audience. Uh, there are about 5,000 financial planners in that audience there uh, in Johannesburg. Um, so that kind of um, helps to the reinforce the overall message that I'm getting across. And I'm getting, and I, what I've done is overlaid some text here, marketing and lead generation solutions for regulated industries, workshops, one-to-one -one training and conferences. So I'm not going over the top in this space. I'm just using this space. Um, just to try and get people's attention in case they don't want to scroll further further down. The tool I use for that is Canva. You don't need to be a graphic designer to do that. Um, and let me show you how I've done that very, very quickly. Um, Canva is, is pretty well free. Um, here you go. Those of you, you know, you're taking the, the, the challenge, you can see the video uh, front pages that, that I've created within here. Uh, and here is the LinkedIn banner that I've created using the free tool. You just literally put in the, the size and the shape and they give you some ready-made templates down the side here. Um, and then you can add text, all sorts of different fonts and colors, and you just add it on here and hit download. Job done, super easy, okay? So you don't need to be an expert to do that. So back to the LinkedIn profile. Try and use that space there. Um, try and get a, a professional and friendly, but also trustworthy looking photo onto your profile. Do you remember from the first session I was saying, uh, human beings, when they look at profile photos, particularly business profile photos, they are actually looking for trustworthiness more than they're looking for competence and confidence and all, all that good stuff as well. Um, one way to do that is to try and get the palms of your hands visible in your profile. Not always easy to do that, I get that, but if you can, um, it does make uh, a difference. Okay, so then you've got your name. Then you have got um, the little speaker, and I'm going to just click the button and hopefully you'll be able to hear this. You see the little speaker just there? You've got 10 seconds of audio that you can use, um, and this is what I've recorded. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Hi there, my name is Bill Calvert. Thanks very much for looking at my profile today. I hope you find something of interest. So, you know, how hard is that? Um, LinkedIn introduced that as a tool to help you pronounce your name uh, in case your name is difficult to pronounce. But it, you've got 10 seconds, so you can put 10 seconds of whatever you like in there. Okay, so the next bit moving down. Oh, if you, if you want, you can put keywords here in your name. So I could put... Philip Calvert, LinkedIn trainer or something in there. I, you can if you want to, it's entirely up to you, as long as you don't kind of overdo it. Now, next bit, you've got what's called the professional headline. Uh, LinkedIn has recently increased the number of uh, characters that you can use in there. So you broadly speaking, get about three and a half lines. Uh, and But what I always advocate you do is aim this bit here at your target market. If your target market is heart surgeons concerned about their income in retirement, what you want to do is ask a question. Are you a heart surgeon concerned about your income in retirement? Let's talk. Something like that. OK, so don't do some generic thing here that says financial planner based in Reading. OK, there's lots of financial planners based in Reading, so don't do that. Differentiate yourself, stand out from the crowd, but aim this at your perfect dream client. So I've put 
Are you an IFA, financial planner or business owner looking to work with more of your ideal clients? I train business professionals how to find more of the leads they really want on LinkedIn and with digital scorecards. So that's what I'm really going at at the moment. I periodically change my professional headline depending on uh, market conditions, what I'm aiming at, time of year, different things like that. But right now for the last six months and probably for the next four or five months, I'm just focusing my efforts at financial advisors. So if a financial advisor arrives on my LinkedIn profile, you know, straight away, they're going to see, oh, this guy works with, with people like me. So ask a question um, and aim it directly at your dream client. Okay, I just want to show you the contact information as well. I briefly showed you this um, the other day. There's my LinkedIn profile. You can put up to three websites in there as well. And please do put your uh, contact information in there as well. But note this bit here, quality leads for IFAs. Keywords, yeah. Advisor Lives podcast. Uh, lead generation for IFAs. Keywords. So when you edit this particular bit, let's see if we can do it live. Here we go. This is where I put in my website address and you get some options. Those options are personal, company, blog, portfolio, and other. Always choose other. When you choose other, you can then in you can then add in these keywords here as well. Okay. So we go back, but so please put your contact details in there as, as well. Okay. Then you get a bunch of stuff here. Don't worry about that for now. Um, when I say fully complete your profile, this is where you do that. It says add profile section that will be on your profile and you click on that and it opens up all the sections that you could complete and I would say strongly recommend that you complete as many of these as you possibly can and add in your top five keywords uh, wherever wherever possible as well um, LinkedIn chucks in this sort of stuff strengthen your profile let's update your headline to match your current position um, I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't want to change it for now so then we have the about section and some people's profile it says summary uh, some people it says about um, they all do the same they all do the same thing so the really important thing about your about section is that you get um, if you can a story in there and keywords so i'm just going to read this bit the fastest I've got someone, a new client through LinkedIn is under seven minutes. I was speaking at a business conference when Katrina, a financial planner, used a LinkedIn technique I was teaching while I was still on stage explaining it. When I came off stage, Katrina ran up to the front, excitedly showed me her mobile and the profile of the client she had just won using my LinkedIn strategy. She couldn't contain her excitement, telling me that she'd been working on the prospect for three months with no response. And then when she used my approach, the prospect responded immediately, okay? That's what I mean by telling a story. Are there any keywords in there? Keyword, 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 keyword. You see where I'm going with that. The reason why you want the keywords in an ideal world in the first paragraph is because when Google comes along and looks at LinkedIn profiles, which it does, Google tends to look at this bit here and the first paragraph that you've written there. Now you can do, uh, you can do a bullet points if you haven't got a little story to tell, just three simple bullet points is absolutely fine, but try and get some keywords in there as well. Um, and here's a format that you might want to follow. Um, about me, my hashtags, so these are some of the hashtags that I use when I'm posting on LinkedIn, who I work with. Now, um, Straight away, I'm looking at this right now and think, actually, I need to update this right now because right now I am focusing on financial advisors and financial planners. So I'm not really interested in C-suite leaders or CMOs. Um, I might be interested in sales directors with large sales teams. I'm not interested in HR directors. Um, and for now, I'm not interested in large companies in pharma, schools and universities. So this is what I mean by keeping it updated, keeping it as focused as you possibly can. So here am I, if I'm professing to be focused on financial planners. Um, and this bit says, are you a financial planner or business owner looking to work with more of your ideal clients? A financial planner might go, okay, I might read a bit more. 
and it's banging on about pharmaceutical and schools and i might think oh, well maybe this isn't the funny this isn't the lead guy for me so there is a job of work that i need to do just simply go in there tidy this up as well so about me my hashtags who i work with so if you are a financial planner that works with heart surgeons concerned about their income in retirement you would put that here yeah how i work with you so just a little bit of methodology a bit of a freebie take the linkedin health check and a good old-fashioned call to action yeah message me use my email or send a message through um, the linkedin profile so that's the about us section um but this is the logical sort of order about me my hashtags who i work with how i work with you a bit of a freebie and a call to action uh that's the sort of format that that you might want to follow there then we have the featured section which as i said the other day does what it says on the tin uh which gives you the opportunity to show off things that you are uh, proud of or that you're doing right now um and you can scroll through them all here now arguably i'm looking at this i'm thinking um i've got too many things that i'm featuring it's quite important not to look like a jack of all trades although these are all similar there's possibly too much and if i was to get rid of all of these here and just leave it at this one uh, linkedin will will use the whole space just to highlight this one thing so that's that's quite a valuable feature to have in there so you can feature um let me show you uh content you've already put on linkedin any articles that you've already put on linkedin a link to somewhere else guess what don't do that um media so photos documents powerpoint presentations pdfs word documents you name it you can upload that there or just literally uh, put anything you like in there so use that um, it's part of the uh, whole service that you get on linkedin whether you're on premium or otherwise then you have your dashboard and these are the numbers that i, I mentioned that you want to keep notice of who's viewed your profile don't worry about article views um, but search appearances are quite useful I'm just going to click on that one right now um, so it's telling me that um, my profile has appeared in search results 644 times between february the 23rd and march the 2nd so from my perspective i'm thinking my keyword strategy is probably about right there it's going to be unlikely that i unless i go ultra niche it's probably unlikely that, that i'll be able to push that number much higher than that okay so i'm quite pleased with that um there's a glitch i'm on premium but they keep inviting me to um retry it for free uh, maybe i should retry it for <laughs> free so where my searchers work devere group financial advisors yeah some mobile firm uh, connects one never heard of them and uh training and coaching and it just gives me some basic information keywords your doc your searchers use doctor uh, i'm not quite sure why i appeared in search results for doctor financial advisor corporate trainer business owner training and development specialist so i'm pleased about that that's neither here nor there pleased about that pleased about that i don't understand that i would actually pay um to have a much much longer list i'm sure the algorithm has got a longer list you know if i've appeared 644 times in that period there there's going to be a lot more words than that and i should be quite honest i'd be happy to pay to see a, a much longer list so that's of interest uh, to me but what's of more interest to me is who viewed my profile yeah uh, so let's have a quick look on that um and this is the latest one uh craig raise your profile build your brand and attract more clients i'm guessing um he's kind of in the same industry as me susan freeing entrepreneurs and leaders uh, we've got some mutual connections which is interesting edwin financial advisor you can see in fact he looked at my profile middle of last week um, and i sent him uh, a message and he accepted my connection request uh, uh, Z, zmz event so that's interesting that's a conference organizer so i'm definitely going to have a look at their profile see what we've got in common send them a message 
um, Sarah, um, one or two of you might actually know Sarah. She used to work at the CII and the IFP. But what's also interesting is uh, this stuff. Uh, let's pick that one. Seven work at Schroeder's Personal Wealth. These are all financial advisors. Some of them are financial advisors going through their uh, academy at the moment. So Philip has looked at me a week ago, a um, bit overdue. I should have gone back, sent her a message, said, hi, Philippa. In fact, let me show you. Let's, why don't we just do this, OK? Uh, so Philip has looked at my profile. So she's a trainee financial advisor at Schroeder's Personal Wealth. Now, I've done some training for Schroeder's Personal Wealth, uh, and my content is sitting on their intranet. Uh, so uh, periodically, Schroeder's advisors look at my profile. But uh, she actually, she's asked to connect with me. Um, so uh, I can accept that one there, which I will do um, later. What else we got? Uh, let's have a look at this one here. Uh, Debbie hasn't got a profile photo. Uh, we need to work on that. We need to work on that. You can see how it just doesn't jump off the page if there's no background there. There's no photo there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect with uh, Devia. I think that's how it's pronounced. So I'm going to click connect. I'm going to add a note. You are always going to add a note. OK. And the sort of message that I'm going to send them is uh, thanks for taking a look at my profile. I hope you found something of interest. Uh, and I've got some ready made scripts that I've got built into a little tool. You can see this here called um, very fast. If I do a keyboard shortcut. Um, let me find the ready-made script that, that's right. I I've got about 10 in here, 20 in here, but I tend to only use three or four of them. Um, here we go. IFA, who's not connected, looked at my profile. I hit that one there. It customizes it with their name. Thanks for taking my profile. Hope you something interesting. Let me know if I can introduce you to anyone on my network. Can I ask what prompted you to visit my profile? In the meantime, it'd be great to connect. Job done. Okay. Um, let's go back. Uh, let's just see if there's any any others at Schroeder's that have not. We're already connected. We're already connected. Let's have an interesting views. Uh, that's somebody I did a conference for the other day. Um, Joe, regional director at Schroeder's Personal Wealth. So even though we are connected, there's no earthly reason why I can't go back to Joe and say, oh, hi, Joe, I uh, hope you're well. Thanks for taking a look at my profile again. Uh, let me know if I can introduce you to anyone in my network. So even when we're already connected, there's no reason why we can't go back and continue conversations uh, that have been going on before. And again, we can click through, look, some uh, three work at St. James's Place. Um, uh, let's, uh, uh, Gabrielle, we're already connected. Uh, Robert Gardner, let's have a quick look at Robert's profile. Is he actually a financial advisor? Let's just check. Director of investments. Yes, he is. Okay. So I'm he's in my target market. He wants to connect with me. So I'm going to click accept to that. I'm going to send a message. So I don't need to uh, send a message through to him there. Okay. So let's go back to my profile. Hopefully you can see there really the value of this bit here. Who viewed your profile? And if you have really put some work into your profile, you're telling some story-based status updates, or you are commenting on other people's content, um, uh, you will see that number going up and up and up. And sometimes they put a pretty graph. Um, let's see if the graph is here. I know there's no graph, uh, but they do show you stats. So last week I had a really busy week. I didn't do much on LinkedIn last week. So the number of views has gone down a little bit over the previous 90 days. So, you know, nobody gets prizes for the for um, for these kind of stats. But what you do get prizes for is what you do with the information that LinkedIn is giving you. OK, so let's continue down the profile. So if you haven't made a note of your numbers, please do. Activity. It shows what I've been doing on LinkedIn. This is quite useful for you. If you're looking at uh, other people on LinkedIn, you can get a sense for what they're doing, what they're commenting on, what they're talking about, this sort of stuff. If you uh, take a look at other financial advisors' content on LinkedIn uh, look, and look at, look at their profiles, 
you can see the sort of things that they are talking about and what they are commenting on. And what you tend to find is that, that financial advisors tend to comment on personal finance related content. So that's a kind of shortcut way to find personal finance related content. Okay, then we have the bit that says um, where we work. But do you remember in the presentation the other day, I said, um, it's actually what you're doing rather than where you work. So this is where I work, this is my uh, business, but look what I've done here, lead generation resources for financial advisors. What most financial advisors put in here is financial advisor. Um, let's see if I can just quickly prove that point. Let's go back to Robert. Um, here he is, let's see what he's put here. Director of Investment, St. James's Place. There, classic example, yeah? That doesn't help him in the algorithm. He's put a bit of standard stuff that financial advisors put in here. If he focused on retirement planning for heart surgeons, he should put financial planner helping heart surgeons to increase their income in retirement. See where I'm kind of going with that? Um, get the keywords in there, speak to your ideal clients, explain how you solve their problems. So here, hopefully I'm speaking to my ideal clients. I'm filling out this bit of information here. And you can have multiple sections here. Look what I've got here, multiple sections. Here's a section, here's a section, here's a section, here's a section, all crammed full of keywords. Now, uh, I've been doing this quite a long time. You don't necessarily have to do that overnight, but you see what is possible that you can do um, here as well. Even my LinkedIn health check, I've even put that in as something I do in my day-to-day -day work. Um, previous job role, head of national accounts for Zurich Insurance. What I, in fact, what I, what I will do, I'm glad I've gone through this today, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to add in uh, working with uh, financial advisors to write more business or something, something like that. Um, but here, I've tried to get some uh, some keywords in here, financial planning as well. So here's me making that same mistake, head of national accounts, meaningless, okay? When what it should do is speak to the problems that I were trying to solve, yeah? Schools, um, really important. You remember I showed how the schools uh, thing works as well. Um, other education that I might have done, courses, um, badges that I might have, volunteer experience. Remember I talked about that? Remember I talked about how uh, Martin Bamford really focuses on local stuff here. Um, but it, all of these sections give you opportunities to get keywords in there as well. And that's really, really important. Remember I also talked about the skills section. Now I want to show you what I mean by making your skill section much more focused. Um, because when you look at my skill section, I thought this was focused, but it's not focused enough. Uh, so for example, digital marketing, uh, that's only helping me marginally in LinkedIn search results. And uh, this skill section here, skills and endorsements, the algorithm uses the words that you have put in here to help you become more visible in search results. So it's important to try and get your keywords in here. Now I wanna try and give you some examples of the way I'm gradually tweaking this. Digital marketing, as I said, it'll help me a little bit, but it's not helping me enough. What I really should put here is digital marketing for financial planners. Yeah, marketing strategy for mortgage brokers, whatever. Yeah, uh, lead generation for IFAs. There's a million and one lead generation people on LinkedIn. So I'm just by me putting that in there, it's helping me, but it's not helping me as much as it could do. So I just keep this in here for now to show you um, how not to do it. Okay, sounds like a good keyword. In actual fact, it could be even better. Lots of professional speakers on LinkedIn, so it's not really helping. So I really ought to have professional speaker in financial services or professional speaker in regulated industries. Um, 
So if I start moving down, you can see where I have started to tweak these, okay? Lead generation for financial advisors, marketing for financial planners, marketing for financial advisors, social media in regulated industries, LinkedIn for graduates, um, online marketing for financial planners. You see kind of where I'm going with this. See, LinkedIn tips um, helps me a bit, doesn't help me enough. Lead generation for IFAs. Um, so hopefully you can see what, what I'm doing there. You can see what I should be doing and you can see what I'm not doing well enough. Try and get real focus in there. Now I get it with financial advisors that not every financial advisor has a niche market like heart surgeons for sake of argument. But it, the chances are, well, I know this, most financial advisors have expertise in certain areas and they tend to have more focus in one area than maybe they do in another area. And it is possible, it's perfectly reasonable to specialize in more than one niche. So if you're a, heart, if you're a financial advisor that specializes in retirement planning for heart surgeons, you can also be a financial advisor that specializes in retirement planning for accountants. So again, try and get some focus if you possibly can think about. So where are the areas that, 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 that I'm really passionate about? What are the areas where I have real expertise in? What are the areas of financial planning that I enjoy most of all? What are the areas of financial advisor that I seem to financial planning that I seem to get most traction in my work? And try and come up with keywords and words in your skills section that relate to those. So what I'm saying, the more focused you can be, the better. You'll also notice that a lot of this is the same thing just said in a multitude of different ways, and there's nothing wrong with that as well. Um, so think about that. You can have up to 50 skills, I think it is, and you can see the ones that I've had on my profile for a long time, I've picked up quite a few endorsements. Um, the ones where I have recently changed them, I have yet to get any endorsements. But in many ways, I'm not that worried about the number of endorsements. What I'm much more, uh, what's much more important to me is these words here, these focused words that will be helping me to appear in search results for my target market. Uh, I know I rambled a bit there, but I hope that kind of, kind of makes sense. Really important. Uh, recommendations and testimonials. Um, thing I would recommend you doing, if you remember I talked uh, about being a good networker in the previous uh, presentation, good networkers randomly give testimonials and recommendations as well. So a, a nice thing to do, something I'd recommend you doing um, once a month, maybe once every couple of weeks, entirely up to you, but just give random testimonials to other people on LinkedIn, people you know, maybe to clients, people like that, maybe to other financial advisors, maybe to other people that you know in the industry. Just give them a random testimonial, okay? Um, and not with the intention that maybe they'll give me one back. It's great if they give you one back, yeah, but just do it because it's a nice thing to do. Also do it because the LinkedIn algorithm notices that you're doing it. And the LinkedIn algorithm notices that you are a networker and that you're not a broadcaster. So um, just give random testimonials. Um, and it's, yeah, it's nice to get some testimonials back, but that's not really the important thing as well. Uh, the accomplishments bit, this is one of the most common sections that people don't complete. Um, so if you've written any books, Fab, you can, you can put them in here. Um, if you've written any articles, put them in here. Just any, anything that you've written, you can put it in here. It doesn't have to have an ISBN number. It doesn't have to be on Amazon. But if you've written anything at all, you could, you could put that in here. Uh, any other prizes that you've won, um, fine, stick them in there as well. Even better if you can get some cheeky keywords into that as well. Look at this here. Um, so yeah, one of my books is called Marketing for Financial Advice Professionals. Um, you know, it's just keyword gold for me, that one. Uh, any courses that you have done, you can put them in here. Any special projects that you have done, uh, you can put them in here. And the final section is interests. Um, if you are looking at other financial advisors' profiles, or even if you are looking at 
people who fall into your target market, always a good idea. Yes, their interests are fine, but click the see all box and look at that. It shows you the groups that they are members of. And that could be useful for you because it may well show you that maybe uh, your target market is accountants for sake of argument, okay? And if you're looking at an accountant's profile, click this tab here, groups, and it will show you which groups that accountant is a member of. And it may well be that you might wanna join those groups as well. And you remember what I said, you're, you're gonna join those groups, but you're not gonna go into those groups and say, hi, I'm a financial planner. And I specialize in financial planning for accountants. You don't do that. But what you do do is you join the group and you watch what's going on and you comment on other people's posts. You hit the like button, just hang out, yeah? Um, and observe what's going on. So that broadly speaking is the profile. Um, and fill it out as best you possibly can. Uh, get those keywords in wherever you possibly can. Try to make those keywords as focused as you possibly can. Um, and the LinkedIn algorithm will, will do its thing for you. Now, um, just to wrap up, you can also have a company page. Um, so if I go to that, it will take me through to my company page. And you also got a dirty great big banner at the top where you can put anything you like on there. You can put your logo in here. Um, you can put some content in here that is keyword optimized, note, note marketing resources for IFAs and financial planners. You can put a website link in there uh, if you want to as well. Um, it shows you um, recent followers, 30-day activity, um, seven new followers, post impressions, a little bit of basic information that you get in there as well. Uh, there is more detailed analytics uh, once you um, have got over, I can't remember what the number of, of followers is, I've not reached that yet. Um, and just like the main bit of LinkedIn, you can post content in here as well. So I've got a video on here uh, for financial advisors, um, my new scorecard that I'm promoting, um, this very challenge. So usual sort of fodder, um, but on your business page, st uh, stories work well, but you're going to put slightly more businessy kind of content in here um, as well as you go along. But use your company page. Um, you can put the exact same content in your company page as you might do on the main bit of LinkedIn as well. It doesn't have to be more company based. Um, just use it. Okay, LinkedIn wants you to use your company page. When you use it, they will reward you. They'll make your content more visible. You can invite people to join it. You can also post events as well. Uh, you can see that here. The company page has got its own events tool. And you, when you're editing your company page, add in three hashtags that you want to show off or that you want to highlight or that you want to use. So um, marketing for financial advisors, um, it doesn't matter. There's only one follower. It's just make sure that you use it because I use that hashtag in most of my posts. Hashtag financial planning, you can see 67,000 followers there. So if I do any post on LinkedIn, anywhere on LinkedIn, and I include hashtag financial planning, a lot of people are gonna see it. 67,000 people are not gonna see it, but a lot of people are gonna see it, financial advisors as well. Okay, what's this show post about life? What's that, that's new, not seen that before. Oh, it's where other people have mentioned us uh, or me uh, in their posts as well. Okay, so let's go back to the main uh, newsfeed and let's just find some content. We can put our own content in here, start a post, write an article. Remember I said, if you wanna write an article, it's gonna be long, detailed, research-based, takes up a lot of time, but if you can tick those, box, those boxes, uh, it will do very well as well. So for most people, put video, put a photo, start a post, and away you go, okay? Story-based stuff goes in there. Um, although it says add a photo, I recommend do not add a photo. There is some evidence to show that if you add images 
on your posts, the algorithm restricts it ever so slightly. Images that are posted through the mobile device are fine. And the reason for that is LinkedIn wants you to use the mobile device uh, as often as you possibly can. Now, so you can put your own content in there or you can piggyback on other people's. So let's just type in financial uh, planning. Now, if I do that, it's gonna give me some choices. People, courses, posts, groups, jobs, companies, schools, events. I'm just gonna pick on posts for now. Um, and what I can do is I can just literally scroll through this stuff here. Um, some of it's gonna be relevant, some of it's not gonna be relevant. Let's pick Tina's here. What she put here cash flow modeling is one of the main components of a robust financial plan but what is it what are the benefits uh, okay when it comes to planning big life events cash flow modeling will be a crucial tool in understanding your financial situation and helping you visualize the future okay and what she's done is she's added a link to some article okay that's her choice to do that but the fact that she has added a link to somewhere else means that the linkedin algorithm is going to penalize that post. However accurate, correct, valuable that is, the LinkedIn algorithm will not show it to as many people as it could. Proof, only four people have engaged with it and there's only one comment on it, okay? What would be far better is for her to add her own observations on cash. So she's made a good start, but she could have added another couple of paragraphs. She could have just taken an example of a client that she's worked with. Um, she's not going to mention by name or she can change the name. But just a, For example, we worked with a client who wanted to do this, that and the other in retirement and only because of cash flow modeling were they able to do it. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so she's done a nice job to start with, but she's blown it by um, putting a link in it. However, that gives you an opportunity. So what I would suggest you do is you hit the like button and then add your own thoughts, okay? Um, great post, Tina. Um, our own clients have benefited from cash flow modeling many, many times. Hashtag financial planning, hashtag cash flow, hashtag, hashtag whatever you like. That's all you need to do. So even though um tina is also a financial planner use her content okay uh, and piggyback on the back of it uh, let's find another one uh what have we got oh, i mean here's another classic don't do example <laughs> see straight away david are you a financial advisor looking to showcase how valuable retirement planning advice might be our retirement mountain poster might help. Okay, so looks like he's a supplier to financial advisors and he's put a link there, okay? Um, only three engagements, only two comments. However, it does give you the opportunity, it gives you fodder for you to comment on, okay? When you do that, the LinkedIn algorithm will notice that you've done it and it will make you more visible in search results. And it will actually make this post a bit more visible as well. Uh, let's just find one more. Um, you don't always find perfect stuff, but let's have a look at this one. Here's Alan. Now, Alan's a top financial planner in the UK. Since we started asking our clients what they valued most about working with us, the three small words that keep coming up are peace of mind, financial planning, well done, peace of mind. Okay, so it's a, it's a kind of disguised advert, absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with putting a testimonial in there as well. Um, so again, hit the like button, put a little post and, and put, uh, yeah, congratulations. Uh, can't beat a good testimonial, Alan. Leave it at that. Hashtag financial planning hashtag whatever. So network with people. Yeah, you know, if you were meeting him at a conference and Alan had just come off stage and won some major award um, and you bumped into him in the bar, you know, you're going to say to him, well done, Alan, congratulations. What's the secret of your success? Something like that. Do what you do in the real world, but do it on LinkedIn as well. Um, 
he hasn't put it there. Let me just see if I uh, go back to, um, she's not using the hashtags. No, sometimes you'll find um, a post where somebody has put some hashtags on the end of it. What you can do, let me just see if I can find one. It might be easier just to show you. Let's just, hopefully someone's done it. Um, let's look at Thomas, see if he's done that. Yes, he has. Good. So, uh, Thomas, I set a goal in 2019 to be the youngest CFP ever. Interesting. Um, so, you put a blurb, a bit of blurb about it. Um, again, do the same thing. Comment on it. Although I think he's US based, um, that doesn't matter. But he has used hashtag financial planning. So, what you can do is click on that and look what comes up the opportunity to follow that hashtag. Uh, I'm already following it here. And when I clicked on the word follow, it sent a message to the LinkedIn algorithm that financial planning is a topic that I'm interested in. You should do the same thing too. Uh, so if you see a post that's got a hashtag afterwards, and it's a hashtag that's relevant to you, click on it, follow it. And then when that happens, it changes the uh, homepage to only show you posts that related to financial planning. So I kind of hope that that makes some, some sense. Um, so I'm just gonna stop that there. Um, I hope that makes some sense. And I hope by looking at my own profile and have, looking at ways that you can engage with other people, in short, do that stuff. Model your profile on my profile. Um, Use your company page wherever you possibly can as well. Find content that is related to your area of expertise. Put really short comments on other people's posts. You can put your own content up there. It's entirely fine. Comment on other people's posts. The algorithm will reward you for doing that. What you'll also find is that um, there'll be a number of people who just, just they'll just notice that you comment. And so purely out of a curiosity, they'll still start clicking. The more you do of this, you will notice the number of people visiting your profile will go up and up and up and up. And then it's kind of over to you. Yeah? When people are looking at your profile, then that is the opportunity for you uh, to engage with them. Hi, Mary. Hi, Fred. Thanks for taking my profile. Hope you found something of interest. Um, let me know if I can introduce you to anyone in my network. Um, use copy and paste if that makes it easy for you. Those scripts that I use are in the book. Uh, if you need any help, any suggestions, again, just drop me a line um, and I'm more than happy to, to help you outside of these particular sessions as well. So in terms of homework, do more of that, yeah? Uh, get that profile really up to speed. Um, start commenting on other people's posts um, and start monitoring um, your profile visits as well. So unless anybody's got any questions right now, that's it for um, this particular session. Um, any questions at all for, for now? Fine, good. That's excellent. So thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you'll have a, a really good week. Uh, Harry's asked a question here. Let me just quickly take a look at that. Um, I can't see a question. It's disappeared. Where's it gone? Uh, bear with me. Uh, your question's disappeared, Harry. Do you want to ask it again or come on to come onto the screen? Here he okay. comes. Uh, hi, Phil. Uh, the question was, um, with posting content, is it better to post it from the company page and then share it on your personal page or go with the posting it through yourself, kind of create your own brand and then reshare it on the company page. I would start by doing it on, uh, on your own, uh, off your own back, but there's no earthly reason why you can't do it on the company page as well. Okay. Well, it's just as well. So you get two bites of the cherry, so you might as well, yeah. might as well do that, yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, great stuff then. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Nice to see you. Have a good week and we'll uh, see you on the next one. Take care.